A huge mistake when troubleshooting a dead PC with no power, no LED light, no fan spinning is to do the wrong test and therefore come to the wrong conclusion. Let's check it out. Hey name tags and welcome this is Ash from Heal My Tech and on this channel I'm trying to help you develop a better relationship with tech so if you're new here consider subscribing and click the bell icon to go from newbie to techie also use my Amazon affiliate links in the description to help out the channel you're also going to find a list of other YouTube videos that I've done on the channel for other types of troubleshoot including a full troubleshoot series so if anything I've said today is not very clear you can go to these videos for a lot more details this is a Dell Vostro small form factor old computer I was about to throw it away because it wasn't turning on and I did a very quick test but I made a mistake which can happen if you're in a hurry it doesn't really matter what kind of computer you have all computers work the same I've removed the hard drive there's also no monitor connected to this computer because I'm only interested in finding out one if it's going to turn on and two if it's going to post or oh, a video on how to check for post without even a monitor only with five components check out the link above and in the description below when you talk about no power there are two main scenarios the first one is going to be that you've used your computer last night or last week or last month and now you're coming back to it you're turning on the power and nothing's happening it's absolutely dead there is no signs of life no LED light no fan spinning nothing okay and you're very sure you did not go into the computer to mess with anything so it is very unlikely very improbable that it's going to be due to a loose cable however you should still check your cable whether they are all plugged in correctly even the external one and the second scenario will be you've got a new computer you've just bought or it's a used computer or you've built a computer or you've migrated components from a different case into a new case and now your computer is not powering up now for this case it will be a much more high probability that is due to a loose cable so you should be even more cautious if it's scenario number two however for each scenario we're here talking about a loose cable and not a broken cable that will be a different problem now from this point on i'm going to try to leave this video uncut in one shot or at least part of it so for a power problem, there are essentially five components or five areas where power is an issue. First one is going to be external power coming into the case. Second one is your power supply unit. Third one is going to be the power button could be damaged in front of your front panel. Fourth one is going to be the cable between the power button and connecting to the motherboard header on your motherboard. It could be damaged and the fifth is going to be potentially your actual motherboard itself which is much harder to troubleshoot so before you make the wrong conclusion do these following tests now let's assume that the power cable and the wall socket is going to be one troubleshoot unit so first check your wall socket plug something into there and make sure you actually have electricity coming through because you might be surprised okay if that passes next get a different known working cable we are here using a three pin standard kettle plug so just get yourself a known working cable plug it into your case and if now your computer works you knew the problem was with the cable just replace the cable however i would highly advise anyone to get yourself a multimeter this thing will pay for itself uh, eventually but you're using dc and uh, uh, continuity test so what we're going to do here is Put this on AC voltage. We're going to check for AC into this. We should be about 240 watt in UK. And I'm getting 243, which is fine. So I know this cable is working okay. As usual, disclaimer, this is to do with electrical stuff. So safety first, anti-static uh, precautions, uh, or otherwise, if you're not sure, consult a professional. All right. So now the next step is to check for the power supply. Okay, now luckily for us, although this is a small form factor, the power supply looks weird, but the connection is standard. This is a 24 pin motherboard connection, and this is a four pin CPU connection. So I can grab a standard power supply and we can test this. And here is one of them right now. And I'm gonna plug the 24 pin, and I'm gonna plug the four pin, if I can get that in, oh, it's the wrong orientation, right? 24 pin here. And hopefully the four pin in here. Okay, plug the power cable, turn the switch on, and turn the power on from the front. Pressing and nothing's happening. All right, 
So that could be an issue to do with your motherboard now. It could be your power button or your cable. But here is where the main problem is. I've just made a huge mistake. The fact that I knew this was working from the last time I used it, the mistake I did was not to test this power supply before I'm testing it into this computer. So test before you test. And hopefully with this still being live, I'm gonna show you, we're just gonna remove this one. Luckily for me, I've got another power supply. Okay, and we're just going to check this one. Same principle. It's an old power supply, but we're just wanting to know whether it's going to turn on or not right now. And we're plugging the four pin cable here. And we're plugging the cable at the back and then press the switch. Right. And now let's turn it on. And what do you know? We've got fans spinning, and hopefully in a few seconds, if everything else is working, we should hear a single beep code for this computer. Even, there you go. So I know without connecting to a monitor that everything else is fine now, so it was definitely this power supply. I'm gonna off this, right? Uh, okay, at this point, uh, even if it's not in one shot anymore, it doesn't matter. So the mistake I made was to assume that the other power supply which is this one was working and it's not just because it was working last time I checked doesn't mean it's still working so you should always test before you test this is called calibration in many cases where even if you're measuring something like temperature or whatever else you should always test your equipment that you're using to test before you test the devices you're about to test if that makes sense okay don't assume now if you don't have another power supply to be able to test you can potentially test your existing power supply whether it's turning on or not with the famous paperclip method now again check the video for more details but essentially what you need to do is grab yourself something metallic like a paperclip uh, or anything else that conducts electricity and you're going to find a black cable on your 24 pin plug and connect it with the green cable. So if you don't know, I hope I can put a diagram for you for where you can uh, plug these in. Any black will do as long as you bridge it with the green, all right? Once this is done, just plug in your power cable. And the switch was on, but like you can see, or if you can hear, the fan's not spinning and I know this power supply is dead. Now, if you want to test this theory, what we can do, and just to show you that this actually works, I'm gonna grab the other power supply and we're gonna find the green and the black. Same thing, green here and black here somewhere. Okay. I'm just gonna plug in the cable. Turn it on, and there you go. We've got fan spinning on this one, so that is now turning on. The only problem with this test is it will only show you whether the power supply turns on or not. It will not show you whether the power supply is delivering the correct voltage for your computer. So you might have a case of, yes, it's working, but it might cause issues like restarting your computer and all cause kind of uh, other stuff. So for this, you actually need to put the power supply under a load test, which we can't do at this stage, but hopefully in a future video. Right, so the conclusion is it was definitely the power supply. I do not need to continue this test. However, if you've done the power supply check and if it's still not turning on, it could be the cable and it could be also the power button okay so for that check out the link above and in the description below for a detailed tutorial on how to test for this stuff so what to do if you have a situation like this first of all because this is a very proprietary design a small form factor power supply you can't really put a standard power supply unit in there i'm not going to be bothered to replace this because it's not worth the money so one of two things I will do is either keep the desktop and then if I get another similar model, maybe the power supply will work and just swap it because I'm not buying it. The other thing I could potentially do is to remove the motherboard, CPU and RAM combo only and then put this in a different system and test it or even mount it on a piece of wood and stick it on the wall as a little computer. So you can always do that. It might actually be fun to do. 
Okay. Now, if you need a lot more detailed instructions or tutorials on uh, troubleshooting various issues with the computer, check out this complete troubleshoot series in the corner there somewhere. And also this other one, which is to do with one PC to all of them or challenge series where we're trying to triple boot Windows, Mac and Linux in a single PC. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Don't forget to subscribe and like and use my Amazon affiliate links. Until next time, peace out. Oh, <laughs>